Hello everybody, and this is uh, Dr. Jerry Cuomo again with uh, another case. Um, this case I pre-recorded earlier with a um, combination of uh, cementable and screw-retained uh, implant crowns. Uh, this case, as I discussed earlier, um, basically was a, a patient that uh, was wearing a, a partial denture. This is the partial denture that he was wearing. It's a maxillary uh, palatal strap. Uh, did have a couple of uh, precision attachments over the years. Things fractured and and displaced and, and the partial became very loose. He lost number six which was replaced with a, an implant, a very large diameter implant. I'll show you the position of that implant and the impression. You can see it's the color code is green for Nobel BioCare, uh, one of the largest implants. It was placed on an angle um, that, that had to go more palatally because of the um, buckle plate of bone was, was, uh, was resorbed um, because of the, uh, the fracture. So this periodontist uh, grafted that area, placed that implant first. Then the patient went back to have his sinus uh, cleaned out and then uh, subsequently a sinus uh, lift and bone graft was placed. And then uh, six more implants were then placed in the um, maxillary posterior area. So. This is the your patient's right side. This is the left. Um, I'm not going to go through my impression techniques, but I wanted to just show you the setup. Um, uh, we do have emergence profiles, all coincided with the impression, customized imp impression copings that I made. Now I'm gonna, just going to walk through some of the laboratory uh, work now. It's always good to fit check your cases. I like to fit check using um, a very thin mylar type of articulating paper. And what I do is I just slide it in between the teeth and pull. And if it pulls without tearing, um, then I know that uh, I got a good contact and it's not going to collect food. If it pulls through without any marking at all, in other words, none of this red material comes off, then I know the contact is too light and it needs to be tightened. So fit checking done. A little bit about the lab work. These screw retained crowns are basically it's porcelain that's baked to titanium metal. So Nobel BioCare will send, um, will create and send back from your scan and design uh, the metal framework which was in not in gold but in titanium and then the lab then bakes the porcelain specifically for this metal and so I was hunting um, a lot I, mean, I was trying to find a lab that uh, could do nice work and yet uh, get away from two-piece cementable in the posterior um, I just like the idea of having screw retained in the posterior it's a lot easier I don't have to worry about cleaning cement there's no um, guesswork involved, and it's pretty fast uh, in the mouth. So once you have things um, checked on the model, then it's pretty straightforward in the mouth. Basically, you're checking occlusion, contours, again, your contacts, aesthetics. So um, these are zirconia crowns, and um, scan from again Nobel BioCare and so and and porcelain is baked to them and that'll be each one of those will be cemented into place a little bit about the lab work and the metal work uh, again this was designed on a computer um, just show you the the long almost six millimeter length um, uh, the um, uh, abutment design for the cuspid. Let me see if I can put that in better focus. There we are. There. 
there we go so you can see how long that is I mean that just goes way below the crest of the tissue is right out where the margin is look at the difference between the mark difference between number six and, and number five A huge difference there so you can see the complexity in this case Oh, it looks like we've got a little bit of something on that lingua. I'm going to have to polish that off. I just saw that. Let's just see what that is. I just got this back from the lab. Eh, it could be water, moisture, some something. Well, we'll polish that. Uh, again, crown work, um, I always double, double, triple check internally. Uh, you can see some of the, even the metal actually rubs off on the zirconia but the main thing I look for is right at the lip of the margin I always look for any type of glaze and and if you see it it's a clump you should polish that off and then recheck your crown now I found a few with this case and I was able to correct it and adjust the uh, the contacts and you can see the red marks where I've been checking the contacts in this case so um, uh, this is an ongoing case and it's something that I'm going to go ahead and place I believe toward the end of this coming week I'll try to film uh, this case I may not be able to narrate it I might have to uh, maybe do something like a, a, an overlay of narration so film it first and just talk about it and try to put the two together for you um, but that's that's it um, make sure you got good broad contacts I always ask my lab for that I don't like to see contact points so you know you've got such a long contact in between some of these implants but you should be really be certain that you have good contact areas uh, so that we don't catch food in there but that's it. A um, little bit about the um, the wax up. As I stated earlier, you know, you could just go ahead and get some ion, old ion crowns, or this stuff just sits around in my office. Or you can take denture teeth, and you find the right dimension. I usually measure the buccal lingual width, and then I just start setting them in with some utility wax, uh, orthodontic wax. Basically, I hollow out as much as I can articulate the model. I'll add a little wax to some deficient areas. And just to give my lab um, a reference, now this cusp needed to come up a little bit higher and I told the lab about that. So a little wax could have been added to that, that cusp tip. Uh, the side looked a little better. So it gives them an indication of where you're going and it's, it's a, a very um, cost-effective way of doing a, your own diagnostic wax up. This didn't take me very long to do at all. Um, if I were to sit here and wax every one of these teeth or pay somebody to do that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to keep your, your cost and your overhead uh, within reason for, the, for your patients. Ion crowns, you can, you can buy them um, and just keep them in stock. Um, contours are already there. You can basically just modify them a little bit. All right, nice little tip of the day. Um, and the labs really like that. So you duplicate this cast so you don't have to worry about these things coming apart. So duplicate your cast, pour it. I usually use Snapstone. I like it, it's fast. So we duplicate an alginate. This is the dupe. And again, uh, we need to add that cusp tip right there but you quickly mount it and uh, give that to your lab and then the lab goes from there to something like this also what I like to do is I make a custom guide table and that um, is on the articulator which is over here Let me just bring that at the position I use the combi articulator. There's so many articulators to use out there. This one I like because I can create my own custom guide table. And what I do is I use um, GC alike. It sets pretty fast. I'm able to, uh, uh, you know, to to go through the different paths while it's setting. 
and then the acrylic becomes very very hard and then you can trim off the excess on the top and then I trim a trough so that I know that the pin continues to go down all the way so we can see it visually and this custom guide table actually comes out and can be stored with the case and the articulator can be used with other cases so I can just unscrew this like so take it out and then just keep that now with the case in case we needed to change anything or, or, or continue to treat this patient that's a record you know it's a record of his guidance and it's a good thing uh, to have so custom guide table um, all my articulators are, are all adjusted so that they are synced with each other so I can go from one articulator to the next um, and that's about it um, I'm um, I'm also skyping with some dentists uh, that wanted to um, to talk about cases. So if you do want to Skype, uh, just let me know. My Skype uh, address is optics19, O-P-T-I-C-S-19, optics19, and um, that uh, that would be great. We can uh, look at a case or even talk about this case if you'd like to um, or if you have a case you want to talk about I'd be happy to uh, to uh, to look at that um, via the internet alright um, that's it for now this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo I'm uh, in the middle of a, um, a nice case it's a uh, implant, screw retained, and cement retained, and um, we'll look forward to uh, to picking this up on the next video clip. All right, take care, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye bye.